Good morning dear children. Today let's discuss the exercise corner of our 10th chapter Algorithms and Flowchart. So all of you take page number 122. Here we can see tick the correct answer. Six questions are given here. We need to choose the correct answer from the options and tick the correct one. So let's move to our first question. The step by step instruction of performing a task to get a work done is called and dash. Options are algorithm, output and input. All we know algorithm is the step by step instruction of performing a task. So we can tick on option A algorithm. Question number 2. A pictorial representation of the order of steps to perform a particular task is called a dash. The options are pie chart, flow chart and loop. All we know flowchart is called the pictorial representation of an algorithm. So we can tick on option B flowchart. Our next question the direction of flow in a flowchart is from options top to bottom, left to right, both A and B. The correct answer is both A and B. We can have the direction of the flow in a flowchart either from top to bottom or left to, to right. So we can choose any one of these answers. So the correct answer we can tick on option C both A and B. Fourth question how many stop boxes should a flowchart have? The options are 2, 1 and 3. The correct answer is option B 1. For every flowchart we should have only one start and stop boxes. So we can tick on option B 1. Question number 5. When a sequence of instructions is repeated in a flowchart until a particular condition is satisfied, it is called a dash. Options are table, loop and chart. The correct answer is option B, loop. So we can tick on option B, loop. Because loop is a sequence of instruction which is repeated until a particular condition is satisfied. And our last question, if then else statement is used when a problem has dash options conditions repetition and calculation the correct answer is conditions whenever we need to check some condition we can use the option called if then else now let's move to our section b write the name and use of each flowchart shapes given below here five flowchart shapes are given we need to write the name of the shapes and also the use so here we can see the first shape name is flow line which is used to connect various shapes in flowchart. So we have to write the name and use of the arrow line. Our second shape name is start or stop box which is used to show the start and stop of a flowchart. Let's move to our third shape. The third shape name is called decision box which is used for checking a particular condition. Our fourth shape name is called process box. The process box is used to show the process or actions. Let's move to our last shape. Our last shape name is input or output box, which is used to show the input or output of data. In the same page, we can see two lab activities. The question number one, Draw a flowchart in MS Word to calculate the product and difference of two numbers. Question number 2. Draw a flowchart in PowerPoint to find the smaller of the two numbers. So here the numbers are given and after watching this video you have to write these two questions in your notebook and also you have to draw the flowcharts. Our first question was draw a flowchart in MS Word to calculate the product and difference of two numbers. The numbers are 6 and 2. So whenever we are starting a flowchart, first we need to give the start by using the rounded rectangle. After that we have to read two numbers 6 and 2. So for input we have to use the parallelogram or it is also known as input or output box. So by using the input and output box we have read two numbers 6 and 2. Now we are going to find out the product of 6 and 2. For that we can use the process box and write product equal to 6 into 2. After finding out the product we need to write the result. For that we can use the input or output box and type the print 12. Now we need to find out one more thing which is the difference between the 6 and 2. For that we have to use one more process box 
and type the difference is equal to 6 minus 2 and by using the input or output box we can print the result also. Finally we can use the rounded rectangle to show that our flowchart is completed. After drawing all these shapes we have to use the arrow to connect all these shapes then only our flowchart will be completed. So this is the answer of our first flowchart which is the flowchart for finding out the product and the difference between two numbers. Now we are moving to our second question. Draw a flowchart in PowerPoint to find the smaller of two numbers and the numbers are 8 and 3. So initially we have to use the rounded rectangle to start our flowchart. Now we need to read two numbers which are 8 and 3. So we can use two parallelogram for reading 8 and 3. Now we have to use a decision box because we are going to check a condition which number is bigger. So here I have used a decision box and there I am going to type is 8 less than 3. Now we are going to check whether 8 is less than 3. And two more input boxes we need for printing out the correct number. Okay, so here I am going to type print 8 and print 3. If the condition is true, then it will go to print 3. If the condition is false, then it will go to print 8. Okay. Now we need to draw the flow lines between all of these shapes. Then only we can show the connection between these shapes. And here whenever we are drawing the flow line, we need to mark whether the statement is true or false. If the statement is true, we need to mention there yes. If the statement is false, we need to mention there no. Okay, so I am going to mention whether the statement is true or false. Here the condition is 8 is less than or equal to 3. We need to show the smaller number. So is the 8 less than 3? No. 8 is not less than 3. 8 is bigger than 3. So the statement is false. Then we need to go to no and we have to print the number 3. Because in this question we need to find the smaller number of 8 and 3. So here we will go to the statement no. Here this is the flowchart of finding out the smaller of two numbers by using the decision box. So all of you should draw these two flowcharts in your notebook along with the questions. So this is our last chapter. All should complete all the exercise corner in your textbook also.